so we're doing the layout on this wall just a hair different. Uh, I went ahead and marked where all the studs go on the bottom and top plate. But instead of actually just putting the studs there like I did the last time, um, we went ahead and put the windows where we want them and it also saves us on king studs because I'm putting at least one side where a stud would normally be so I don't have to add one. I'm also avoiding the same mistake I just made on that wall which was having windows across plate boundaries. So the top and the bottom plate end right here instead of in the middle of this window. So I'll be able to stand this whole wall up without the same amount of problems that we had on that. Same with these two windows here. They are not on the plate boundary, so that was important. So we got that wall up last night, right before it got dark. We went ahead and laid out this wall and we sorted the front and back wall window and door pieces. I guess I haven't done the door stuff yet, but we uh, have all the window stuff done for the front and back wall and that's sorted over there. Today we are going to get this wall stood up and start working on the back wall, maybe get that one done too. I need to go ahead and do layout on the top and bottom plate. I've marked the stud layout, but I need to mark where each, you know, cripple and trimmer goes. So <clears throat> I'm gonna get to it. Casey should be here in just a couple minutes. So there's a few ways to do corners on a building and this is the conventional way where you box a full corner in. This is not good for insulation though because the only way you can insulate this is putting insulation back here before you put sheeting on the outside and you really should but still it's just not the best way to build a corner. Um, a better method is to do what's called a California corner. And it looks like this on the ground here. So you still have a nailing surface to go onto this wall, but it gives you a cavity to insulate on the inside. So we can just shove that full of fiberglass or rock wool or whatever we decide to use. Um, I looked at fiberglass prices and it would be $2,000 for us to fiberglass all the walls and put drywall up. It's like $3,000 to do rock wool. Just the rock wool? So it's like double the cost essentially. Yeah. Well, it's, it's really triple the cost of the insulation because the fiber. Well, so, rock wool insulation is what we would much prefer. It's very fireproof, it, like, it doesn't really even burn. And you get more for your space, the cavity. Uh, it's a lot denser insulation than fiberglass. Fiberglass, you get like an R19. In the same 2x6 cavity, you can get R23 in the uh, rock wool version. Um, in the floor cavity here, we have R30. And in the walls, we're going to have R19 fiberglass. Just because that's what we can afford.
sometimes you just got to use the help you have, even if it's not very good. I can hear you. <sighs> So I needed just a little bit of space, a little bit of filler essentially to go between this header and the top plate. It looks like this piece of 5.8 subfloor, I can beat it in there and that should be pretty solid. The header's out. deciding on the window placement for the bathroom mainly the toilet area and like do we want to put it next to the toilet or do we want to put it next to the door
measuring tapes there, bud. Welcome to our fort, <laughs> our tarp <laughs> fort. We have three walls up. This works pretty well. So, we uh, had a tarp delivery that got, that was early. This worked out really well for us because this wasn't supposed to be here for like another day or two. And we're getting the material delivery for all the other stuff that we need except the trusses and the rest of the zip tomorrow. So. We'll be able to use all the tarps that we were using on this for that material. We've got a bunch of pallets to put that on. Hopefully it's not going to rain in the morning. We just did have like a bit of random rain that we weren't expecting. And so we just threw this up real quick. I don't know how much that y'all can see in the dark. So this is what the inside looks like. Um, we have this giant tent canopy that my parents got us. Not exactly the intended use for this. And I'm sure my... Mom is going to give me a phone call whenever she sees this, but... Laughing her ass off. A little bit. <laughs> so, we're going to use this to hold up the tarp and then secure the tarp a little bit better. This tarp's giant, but it's like just the right size, so it worked out pretty well. You ready to expand this? And Casey's hair is like super staticky, so it looks like... I don't know, she's... Uh, being electrocuted, yeah, that's that's a good way to describe that. Being <laughs> like a lightning bolt. So we might have built a giant fort last night <laughs> out of a single tarp and then two tarps are like clipped on the side, but it's supposed to rain the next three days and we're not sure how much more water the subfloor can handle. So we wanted to get a giant tarp to kind of ease our minds. <laughs> But now we can work literally whenever we want, day, night, rain, snow, <laughs> we got coverage for a little while at least. I think it's pretty cool. I'll show you guys in a little bit later. We're actually getting ready for our second delivery of supplies, so I gotta pull out some tarps so we can get it tarped. So see you later. some crazy hair this morning hat. okay that's better found my hat so we just got our latest delivery under that tarp on the right right there that's all two by sixes and two by tens 
that long tarp back there that is our lvls and eye joists and these are all of our beams and posts for the porch we're getting everything covered up it's supposed to rain for the next two to three days so we're not going to be messing with a whole lot of this besides the two by sixes and we're just going to get those moved in to the building right there we can cut do whatever we need to inside the tarp get these you get this last wall stood up get a load bearing interior wall stood up and then we can start setting eye joists so we are doing well we uh can work out of the weather now this is starting to progress forward so we're in a good spot we just gotta get all this stuff covered up and protected from the rain all right that is it for this morning i have some work I need to attend to that isn't building a house and uh, we will pick this back up this evening whenever I get off Casey will probably be working on the video editing all day and uh, wait for this weather to clear out even though it's decent right now we gotta get some other stuff taken care of hopefully it'll be decent this afternoon but I have a feeling that's not gonna be the case it doesn't matter though yeah that's true we just have to take two by sixes and go in there and stand up that wall. So and once we get that one stood up, this tarp structure will be a lot more sturdy, if that's what you want to call it. Um, we're using the pavilion inside to, or canopy inside to help keep the tarp up. But once we get this last wall up, we can move that to a little bit more centered and work really well. Get some lights hung up. <laughs> She's very much looking forward to sleeping in there. I don't know about that. I know I am. It's a little cold at night. Yeah, we'll be the next couple of nights. Let's bring a blanket or four. Sleeping bag. Should be all right. Disaster averted. Are you sure? As long as we sleep out here and we push the rain off. You're joking, right? Only a little. <laughs> it's working. <laughs> Once we get this wall up and this wall up, we'll be fine. Okay. So. so, worst case scenario, you just have to sleep out here for one night. You're going to do layout on this wall, I'm going to do layout on that wall. Okay. Alright, let's get to it. kind of help I'm working with like it's it's help but is it good help <laughs> I'm gonna chuck the safety inspector over here it looks like Christmas tree in no time. <laughs> <laughs> 